Right. The apprehensions sweeping across Nigerians, including members of the governing elite over the spread of COVID-19, is largely linked to the fact that the ailment is highly contagious, infectious, and so far has no known cure. The frequent observation is that the lessons for the governing elite are the need to truly develop and revolutionize, revolutionize the local healthcare delivery machinery. This lesson has been accentuated by the fact that many of these same governing elite are now confined to seek help in Nigeria at the mercy of an underdeveloped healthcare system. Joining us live in the studio is legal practitioner Libros Oshoma to have a look at these conversations. Uh, good morning, Libros, and it's good to have you. What's your thoughts? Um, over the past weeks, we've heard um, different governors testing positive to COVID-19 and, you know, making a lot of people to say, well, this uh, disease indeed is big men um, virus. Uh, COVID-19 is for big people. How do you react or respond to this? Yeah, uh, first and foremost, I need us to disabuse our mind from that fact that um, COVID-19 is for big men. It is mm. not a big man's sickness. It's a sickness for everybody. But the fact remains that big men are being tested more than the poor men. And, and so, and that's why it will look as if it seems as if it is big man sickness. How many poor men have access to the testing facility mm. in itself? So, you know, you have more big men being tested. Mm. You know, if a big man is um, is coughing, he would you know, because they love life so much, because of the weight around them, naturally you see them rush to go test so that they can start early treatment. Mm. So that's what's playing out and not that... Um, and so most of uh, the poor men, you, do, you see a lot, a lot of them, they would rather take local herbal medicine, mm. the one we refer to as Agbo here, and then, um, you know, or concussion. And so that's why you... Some of them also are living in denial that, oh, look, it's a big man sickness. It's... And like um, your first guest, the medical doctor, did say, if actually we are testing the right numbers, you would discover that, you know, the numbers will be much more than we already have. And then, only God knows, is it that somebody asks, is it that, you know, poor people no longer die? Mm -hmm. You know, you have a lot of poor people who are dying unannounced. You know, nobody hears about them. Nobody even knows that if they died of COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, some are scared to go to the hospital because of the stigmatization. You know, so that's why. That's one one side. And then the second part is, you know, sorry to say this, we discussed this last week. Ajimobi naturally comes to mind. Mm -hmm. And the question I ask myself, if that 45 plot of land that he built, that massive house that is in dispute, if Ajimobi had built a state-of-the-art hospital in that place for, you know, the benefit of the people of your state, he probably would have been alive today. That hospital would have been able to take care of him. And you find out that a lot of these are people. Remember, Akpabio, Akpabio built, according to him, mm. a world class hospital. But he had a minor um, um, road accident in Abuja. He was flown to London. That same world class hospital could not even treat him. You know? And, 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 and it's the same thing. So the chicken is gradually coming home to roast. That's why some people have the opinion that, that this COVID 19 is a leveler. Now you can't rush abroad for those treatment. Mm. People built those facilities. And so, also, the reality is that this ad hoc arrangement that we have, this makeshift canopies that we call isolation center, it cannot, they know, even some of the governors can't go there. Mm. So they know that it can't hold them. So the earlier we begin to think of putting permanent structures in place, the better for us. Because starting from if I core of Delta State, uh, Abia, Abia State Governor Okeze Biazu. Who was um, tested negative now, though. Yes, now he tested negative, but he passed Ebony through State. the process. They are lucky, Ebony, uh, Kaduna State. You know, at some point, they said even uh, Mobaseki, he went to self isolation. Uh, Kogi State's um, governor was also mentioned, but he said that no, those he doesn't have. have been in denial. You let's know, just... so, so let's. let's the, this is a reality amongst us. The earlier they realize that it is the facility that they put in place that will attend to them, the better. better. Otherwise, we might... Um, we stay at this conversation. We, exactly. All right. We also have joining us in this conversation, Evans Ufeli, who is a legal practitioner. Good to have you, uh, Mr. Ufeli. Yeah, good morning. 
Thank you for being with us. Now, if, if anyone has been keeping track, this is just the conversation that uh, Liberals and I are having in, in studio, we will say that you know, most of our governing elites, or some of our governing elites have tested uh, as positive to COVID-19. And the conversation Liberals and I are having is, 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 that, is it like um, um, COVID-19 is now the, the illness for big people, as most average Nigerians would say. And if it is, isn't, is this indicative of their being less careful and that's why they are more susceptible, you know, to this virus? What's your thought? Well, I, I think that uh, no sickness is actually a big man's sickness. I mean, the big man and the poor man will have the same respiratory system. We have the same biological configuration and makeup every human being actually. So uh, everybody is susceptible to the disease. Uh, it is uh, ignorance and a huge deposit of uh, uh, ignorance that is uh, actually responsible for that kind of thoughts uh, in the society. But if I want to advance this further, I will say that the governors uh, who have tested positive and those who are, are negative collectively contributed to the problem that they have and that we have generally in, in this uh, time and age. If you look at it, the governors especially have been very reckless. Politicians generally in Nigeria have been very reckless. Even during the lockdown, even during the interstate uh, lockdown and all that, you find governors moving from one place to the other. We found uh, uh, the governor of uh, those states traversing the entire the entire country, uh, trying to find his footing on the political crisis on his head. We found the governor of uh, River State, who uh, went ahead to destroy people's property for non-compliance. We found him uh, having a political rally somewhere where there were no social distancing. The same thing happened in Oyo. The governor also did the same thing. Okay, so when you look at it generally, you find that that the politicians, in order to keep their their political uh, ambition under under check, to make sure that uh, they sit tight and retain themselves and retain their resources, have contributed heavily by moving up and down during this period, and they were not observing any kind of social distancing. For the poor, it was practically sometimes impossible because of the kind of lifestyle that they have been subjected to. Because the country have no social support system, the country have no housing policy, the country have no public health care, the country have nothing whatsoever for the ordinary man to hold on to. So uh, uh, the spread on the poor is uh, happened as a result of uh, uh, helplessness and hopelessness. But the spread among the rich happened as a result of carelessness and then all kinds of... Uh, if you look at the governor of Kogi State, for example, he has been repressing testing. That there's no testing in his state. There's no this, there's no that. If you look at the governor of um, uh, Cross River State, that one has been on an intellectual voyage of nothingness. He said the PR system is what is required. Now it is in the state. He is also not really giving. Uh, the day they came out to to uh, celebrate the free that uh, Cross River City free of COVID-19, the next day five people tested positive. Okay, and they also gathered at those events where they celebrated. I don't know what they are celebrating. I mean, our governors, uh, apart from the fact they have been that, that they have been reckless and they have not been able to make life. Um, what why for the citizens under this uh, pandemic they have become much more reckless and uh, much more uncaring okay by their conduct and their activities which have uh, resulted in all this and then for the federal government the federal government also contributed hugely to the crisis in early march when this thing broke out within countries. I, I know it started in December in China, but we started having the spread across uh, from um, um, the news gained traction 
from uh, early, early March, when the federal government ought to have uh, shut down the, the place. But because the president's daughter was somewhere in the UK, one, one uh, minister's uh, son is somewhere, this one is that way, that one is that way. The late Abakiari was at uh, Germany and all that. So because of that, the federal government delayed and they allowed the disease to come in and they started running from pillar to post. I think, first of all, the federal government should apologize to Nigerians for being reckless and for being uncaring and for uh, 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 lacking systems and methods to, to be, you know, to be um, very concerned about the plights of, of Nigerians. All right. And then, if you look at uh, if you look at the way the federal government even went about uh, the pronouncement of the lockdown, the two weeks, the subsequent two weeks, the one week again, and all that, you find out that within this, the federal government could not also control the political class to make sure that uh, we have a, 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 a positive way of containing the disease. Mm. So it became a convoluted system. It looked like the country was not under any kind of administrative control. So the disease spread uncontrollably. Yeah. And then the, the testing that we're having, we don't have enough capacity to do the testing. And that is why the, the result is low. If you look at South Africa, the result is so high in South Africa because their testing capacity is very high. And I think that we still have more persons who have this disease, mm -hmm. and then we have not been able to uh, uh, curtail it. Mm -hmm. And then the, even the education and the, um, the orientation that the citizens require, apart from social distancing and then uh, using of face mask and all that, there are people who believe that this thing don't exist. What exactly is the, are the state government and the federal government doing to convince these people to have them understand exactly what is going on. All right, Barista, so these are I issues. may just add, interject to you and add, uh, the fact that we are getting these people, you know, the elites, uh, testing positive also to COVID-19, wouldn't that be kind of sending message to, a strong message to some Nigerians who still say, you know what, COVID-19 is a hoax? It, uh, well, it, it has a way of sending messages to the undesigning. Uh, and also, you know that uh, the educational structure of the country also uh, calls for a lot of um, attention because it is the aggregates of the intellectual prowess of the citizens of the country that defines development. Where you have 54% uh, illiterate uh, 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 capacity, that in itself is a huge nuisance value. So uh, uh, the, it, it, it's sending a negative message outrightly because the, the bulk of the citizens in rural areas, even in urban areas and all that, are largely illiterate. Okay? So it will take more of education to let them understand that it is not a big, that no sickness is actually for any big man that everybody can catch this virus and it can be devastating. That is what I said that the reason we're having this uh, spread is because of the lack of belief also, which is contributing to the fact. Now, what is the federal government doing exactly to disabuse the minds of people that this thing is not just the sickness for the elite? What, what are they doing really to that effect? That is one of the things we need to understand. And then the, the federal government also in the isolation centers and then the testing centers and then the capacity they say they have, uh, they have not been able to demonstrate that um, they have full capacity and they have full control over the pandemic. They have not shown that. All we see every day is just figures. Uh, we do not know the veracity of those uh, figures and those tests. We actually do not know whether those people who actually have recovered, truly recovered, and all that. So it calls for a lot of uh, investigation, and it calls for a lot of probing into the process. And then uh, the, uh, the, the contributions... Penny, I'm afraid that's all we can take. Thank you so very much. Uh, we still have okay. Debrus in studio, so we'll just have him to his final thoughts. Thank you, and keep safe out there, Barista. All right. Thank you.
All right, uh, Libras, you've, um, Barista Ophili has raised a couple of um, issues there. But, but one, one that stands out mostly is the issue of mistrust, you know, the communication that we've gotten or may not have gotten from the government, you know, to the people about this whole issue of the pandemic. The pandemic is going to be with us, you know, for a bit, according to what the World Health Organization has said. How do we balance the mistrust, you know, between the lead and, you know, those who are supposedly leading the people? Um, like they say, um when rumor tribes, even intellectuals, are turned to convey your bets. Mm. And, and so, um, in the, if you want the absence of rumor, you give information. So the only way you can you know, encourage inf um, uh, people, you can create awareness, is to pass the right information. At the right time. At the right time. And um, I had consistently also said that government officials' attitudes, you know, create the impression that it's either a scam, the COVID-19 is either a scam, mm -hmm. or that it's for big men only. Thank God for Plus TV, the likes of Plus TV and other TV channels, who are, you know, daily trying to create that awareness to ensure that people are aware that it is not just a big man's sickness, but also, I would also want you to report more also of people, you know, who are at the lower ladder yeah. who also have contracted this virus. So that will further, you know, create that awareness mm -hmm. that truly it is not just for the governors. Because we hear it's breaking news when a governor or a deputy governor or a speaker contract the virus. But it is not breaking news when the ordinary man on the street contracted and so that's why people will naturally say it is for big men mm -hmm. but like i said earlier it's because those people also are not tested the government should ensure that you know you increase the testing capacity increase it in a way that when you have you know centers for the rich you also should have centers for the poor and create that massive awareness also so that people would be able to come voluntarily for testing because the fear is that a lot, there's this belief that this is a deadly disease. Once you contract it, it is final for you. Mm -hmm. Government should also learn to consistently create that awareness that it is not death sentence, that it is treatable. And, and you know, and not just give us numbers or oh, people that have recovered and have been discharged. Yeah, it is good. It's encouraging. At the beginning, I also had, you know, I watched one of your interviews of one of the survivors, mm -hmm. you know. So things like this help to create awareness, to allow people, inform people that, look, this, this is, is not real. a death sentence. But when we only report deaths, oh, Abakiari, uh, Ajumobi, and all of those things, those bad news will take the center stage mm -hmm. and people will run away even when they have it. They will rather run away than, you know, being tested so they can be treated. These are, and then this junketing, a situation where you want the rule to apply to others, you don't also want it to apply to you. Mm -hmm. Evans mentioned, you know, governors who would apply law strictly, but when it comes to them, they either not maintain social distance, or even when they wear the fixed marks, it's for photo ops, you know? So when you do that, and then somebody jokingly said something about the police. Police that are enforcing you know, the uh, COVID-19 regulations, you see them jump packed in a van. That's right. And then you now begin to ask, is it that the police also, the uh, uh, COVID-19 respect these uniforms? <laughs> you see last man jump packed in these, their last man pick up vehicles without face mask. And then you ask yourself, ah, but these are people who are enforcing regulations, but yet they are not complying with the regulations. So is it that you know, this thing does not affect, you mm. know, government. And so when you, when you don't, you really don't need to give information. Those actions alone, you know, will go far mm. than the information you give. So when, that's why it is good for you, you know, say, it should start with you. Because you are sometimes the information that people see. Same.